If you're going to be a complete community, chambers do that. They, here's some opportunities, take them. Community, it's where we have our homes, raise our children, and live the best parts of our lives. A good community is energized by good government, held together by caring people, and bolstered by solid businesses. That's why a Chamber of Commerce is so important. Healthy business communities foster a vibrant residential quality of life and vice versa. The Chamber seeks to meet the needs of both of these audiences and to connect one to the other. These efforts have allowed us to enhance the prosperity of Greater Rochester for the past 60 years. A proclamation by Clarence M. Burr, President of the Village of Rochester on May 2, 1955, announced the first membership drive in response to the growing need for a Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber was founded with official Articles of Incorporation on August 24, 1955, by the first Board Chair, Robert Warren of the Lucille Shop in Rochester. Our first board of directors included a doctor, a financier, an insurance professional, a hardware store owner, a jeweler, a drugstore owner, two department store owners, the first Rochester supermarket manager, the village of Rochester attorney, and an automotive dealership manager, serving what was then the Rochester Area Chamber of Commerce. We had a, a small office in a building uh, on, in the 400 block on the west side of Main Street which is above uh, a store which I think is a resale shop, might be closed now, but it was next to uh, the Bean and Leaf coffee shop. Uh, very small office uh, with very minimal responsibilities because the people that founded the chamber had uh, uh, just the idea of taking care of three or four blocks of Main Street. And uh, their ability to coordinate events was their main thing. They wanted to have a few um, evening events and sales and things of that sort. So they founded the chamber with that purpose. The Rochester Area Chamber of Commerce opened at 505 Main Street in Rochester, managed by a part-time office manager, Muriel Bird. The first committees included business ethics, civilian defense, fire prevention, safety, parking, and retail. They lost no time becoming active in the issues, pressuring a growing Rochester community. Over 145 members in two categories, residential and business, joined during this initial time at a cost of $10 for the June through December 1955 term. The residential membership was for local residents with businesses or professional interest outside the Rochester area. Village manager Robert Sloan hailed the success stating, it will be a good thing for Rochester. With such rapid growth, the community truly needs a Chamber of Commerce. A first order of business involved contacting the state highway commissioner on an issue that would have prevented the Clinton River Bridge from being widened and repaired as was desperately needed for the sake of a bypass roadway. This recommendation by the Avon Rochester Oakland Planning Commission would have bypassed Rochester entirely. When the 1955 parking facilities were reviewed and deemed wonderful, Chamber President Robert Warren commented, yes, but what about five years from now? These actions and a clear vision shown by the Chamber set the tone for the impact to come. By October of that year, the Chamber hosted the first free movie night showing Lassie to over a thousand children while their parents went to shop downtown. In September of 1956, the Chamber was pleased to announce its commitment to building a lagoon in the Rochester Civic Center area. This lagoon was to be used for community fishing and ice skating. It was built with funds raised from previous events and donations from other nonprofit organizations. You may know this lagoon today as the pond outside the Rochester City Building in Municipal Park. The Chamber hosted the first ice carnival of winter activities in Rochester in January of 1957. May of that year saw the Safety Committee conducting an automobile inspection program in which over 2,400 vehicles were inspected. Over 4,000 area maps were distributed to residents and hundreds of inquiries were answered by phone or letter. The Chamber office also served as headquarters at this time for the Avon Community Chest and March of Dimes. 
In 1959, the chamber was active once again regarding legislation called the Keogh Simpson Bill, H.R. No. 10, which permitted self-employed persons to defer a portion of their federal income tax each year in order to provide a retirement benefit fund. The chamber hosted events and panel discussions to educate the community on the bill and the possible effects on local business owners. The tradition of the Rochester Hometown Christmas Parade was initiated by the Rochester Lions Club on December 13, 1951. The first parade featured the Rochester, Avondale, and Highland Park marching bands, a few floats, and Santa, with a free kids show at the Hills Theater in downtown Rochester following the event. Hudson Hill, a founding board member of the chamber, served for a number of years on the early Lions Club Parade Committees and actively involved the Chamber in parade proceedings. As the parade grew in popularity and the Chamber grew in membership and volunteers, it was determined the Chamber would assume management and financial responsibility for the parade by the early 60s. With the expansion of the Central Business District of Rochester in the 1970s, the Chamber grew to include the businesses of Avon and Oakland Townships. At this time, the board underwent a rebranding to include this enhanced territory and changed its name to the Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce. One of the things that we did that helped us deal with that was we established um, zones. And so we had the outlying zones to the west, the outlying zones to the south, and the downtown. And each one was treated as an equal uh, uh, zone. The common good was to bring people to the area uh, to shop and do their business. But each one then had a say in what was going on. Each one could do their own events. Every time we did anything, we, had to, we always had to consider each zone and how they were going to respond. In that respect, uh, we had some fairly contentious board meetings. Many people in the downtown said, look, we're downtown. Uh, we have a mission. And the people outlying said, what do we have in common with the downtown? So we had two factions and we were bringing them together and that was our job, but that's a chamber's job any place. So I think we did it fairly well. While the chamber was growing, the 1970s also brought some big challengers to compete with our local stores. The 70s brought the uh, advent of the Oakland Mall. Um, I believe that was the first really, really big time mall uh, that, that came in. And with, I believe they had Hudson's and Sears and several others. Uh, we saw a, uh, a pretty strong deterioration of our, uh, of our main street and even of our, of our zones and our outlying businesses uh, being pulled away. So much of what we did was to try to, to talk about small town charm, the ease of uh, parking, the smallness, the, you know, and, um, and that seemed to work to some extent. It, it, it's certainly very, very hard to compete with the, the big mall. Chamber membership continued to grow in the late 1970s, creating the need to hire its first full-time director. In the early 1980s, membership increased to over 600 businesses, and by the end of 1982, the board of directors increased from 12 to 15. This time also saw the establishment of a business women's roundtable and a political action committee to support pro-business candidates in general elections at the state level. A lot of it was probably because we were involved with the State Chamber of Commerce, too. And the State Chamber of Commerce, of course, was very political. And I got involved with them, too, and learned things that maybe we could be doing as I met other chamber people from other communities and so forth. And then I got to know our own legislators. And we started having meetings and stuff and to have them address some of our um, meetings, our membership meetings. And then as politics went on uh, and the business community said, you know, we'd like to see this pass or that pass or something like that, we decided, well, now maybe the best way to do that is get a political action committee so we can take some steps some positive steps to meet the needs of our community. The Chamber also worked with Avon Township to amend the Business Registration Ordinance. Amid all of the changes happening in the early 1980s, the Chamber welcomed a new board president who was happy to be there, sort of. I was also involved with the Rochester Hills Lions Club. We put on a hot air balloon festival every year 
principal here at the college, Michigan College at that time. And it just happened to be the same weekend as the Chamber's um, carnival they had. And uh, Roy Jewell, who was the president at the time, had contacted me, wanted me to move the dates, and I just frankly told him that's not going to happen. So the Chamber went out and rented a sign with a big red arrow pointing north to their carnival downtown. <laughs> you talk about a war. So you know, we, we got through that, and frankly, uh, after the, uh, the events were over, we got together and he asked me if I wanted to join the board. So I figured, you know, keep your enemies closed kind of thing in that situation, and uh, I did. One of the first items of business for Chairman Shelton and the board was another relocation of the chamber offices to 812 North Main. During that time, we were trying to find a place to live, so to speak. We were able to rent, and actually I think it was rent-free, a building up by North Main. It was actually a pizza place at one time, and uh, the board of directors went in and painted it, carpeted it. We got everything donated by Dillman and Upton. Thank God for that. We didn't, we didn't have any money, let's just put it that way. You could have seen Jerry Card and I painting that building on 812 North Main. Number one, I'm not a painter, but we, somehow or another we were able to cover the walls and get rid of the smell of the pizza. And Chair Russell Shelton and the larger chamber board oversaw many accomplishments in 1983. Many would change the Rochester area dramatically. These included the creation of an economic development committee, co-sponsoring a community-wide food drive and compiling data for an economic development resource book. But the two initiatives with the longest lasting impact were the chamber's role in the Greater Rochester Area Community Foundation and the Older Persons Commission. Dick Heisinger was still involved with the Chamber of Commerce and Dick it was just a wonderful community member and, and, and felt that there were needs in the community that maybe weren't getting met. There were people that needed help, there were youngsters that needed help. Um, and he came to me one day and came up with this idea of the Community Foundation. Well, he sold me on that right away, of course. So then I had to present it to the board of directors at that time. Well, they bought into that plan right away. And then the community foundation was formed. They started raising money and it's still doing well today. The OPC was having meetings in that school and um, they did a lot of work out there, out of there, taking meals to the homeless and so on and so forth. And Mary Miller, was of course involved and um, I got to know Mary quite well and uh, so she came forward at one time and she started spouting about this older person's commission so they could have a place where senior citizens could go, their needs could be met, whether it be educational, recreational or health-wise or whatever, so that they could do things and have it in a facility that was good, that was large enough and could accommodate the needs of all the seniors in the community. So, and the board thought that that was a good idea too. And uh, so Mary asked me one day if I'd help her a little bit on raising some money to get this started. So we sat down one day and looked at all of our chamber membership list and those that we thought might, you know, be really willing to give money to this effort. And so we started making calls. The two organizations remain a big part of what defines our community and are consistently given as key reasons why people move to, love living in, or want to emulate the Rochester area. By 1985, the Chamber had yet another new location on 433 West University Drive and set the objective of a capital fund drive that would establish a permanent space for the chamber office. We, we had a tendency to move a lot. We moved from North Main to on University for a couple years. We needed more space. And uh, it just got to the point where we're tired of paying rent and it's time to, to own something. And we were fortunate enough to start a capital campaign with the people in this community and buy where we're currently at today and get it funded with the help of a mortgage to the bank, which Sherry was quickly to pay off, but we, uh, we had to, you know, borrow some money, and the rest of it came for all the furnishings, uh, all the interior was donated by businesses here in this town, so it, it came together. I mean, it was time to have our own place. 
an active legislative committee was now reporting to the membership on activities and issues that could affect the business climate. Another facet of the Chamber's work was sponsoring and coordinating events that aided the marketplace. One such event was notifying shoppers and coordinating merchants in July for Rochester Sidewalk Day Sales, where stores lined the sidewalks of downtown and outlying malls with sale items. To promote holiday shopping, the Chamber organized an event on the first Monday night after Thanksgiving where businesses gave free gifts to patrons to thank them for their support during the year. This custom was called Lanya. Then, to bring in the new year, a first baby award was always given by the Greater Rochester Chamber with the cooperation of Crittenton Hospital. Part of the promotion for these holiday events included a live radio broadcast from downtown Rochester featuring ads for local businesses and general promotion of the area. This was only done once. We actually had a live broadcast in the Chamber office on WPON, which I'm not sure how many people heard it that day, but we were doing, you know, spots and we were selling advertising, again to raise money for the Chamber. And I uh, did part of it, I mean everybody took a part in it, but uh, I got stuck reading a PSA. And <laughs> I wasn't even sure what the PSA was about, but I, I actually mispronounced the word, if I can say it or not. That's not the right word. Or can, why can't I say it? Can I? What was the word you were trying to say? It's, it's organism. 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 But it just came out wrong. And I didn't even know it until it was all over. I, th I thought for sure the FCC was going to shut us down that day. Possible federal sanctions aside, fundraising is an important part of any successful chamber. And more growth and more programs meant the need for more funds, sometimes at great personal risk. Um, again, it sounds like we were out raising money all the time, and we were. And we, we uh, were able to secure the uh, river crest for a night for the country western. Uh, People that know me know that I'm not really in the country western. If it raises money, I'll, I'll be fine. We, we sold it out. We had both rooms. We had two bands and a mechanical bull. And at that time, I don't know if people, it was a pretty popular thing to get on a ride. And uh, when it showed up, we realized it's not plug and play. So Bert Rewald, who was an electrician in this town at that time, showed up like at 3 o'clock so we could go out, you know, get going at 5. It was amazing, really. It just a lot of people like him that made it all happen, but uh, it was a big hit. The only person that, that I recall that actually fell off the bull was Tom Varner, which I think most people know in this town, but he wasn't hurt. Today, I don't know. I mean, we, we, I wouldn't do it again. I mean, we, I don't think we even had insurance. We sure had a lot, a lot of fun. Everybody had it. it was a good time. And sometimes involving some pretty big celebrities. There was a new dealership, uh, Oldsmobile, I think it was Oldsmobile and D GMC that was going in on South Rochester Road. And they were going to have this big grand opening and there was a lot of hoopla over that and so forth. And we found out that Fuzzy Zeller was going to be there. He had been, he had been invited to help promote this grand opening and greet people and of course nosh with people and so on and so forth. So. My husband and I went down, of course, for the grand opening. It was in the evening and there was all kinds of music and hundreds, hundreds of people down there. <clears throat> and we walked in the door and my gosh, here was Fuzzy Zeller that had just walked out of this big room and was walking toward us in the hallway. I said, oh my gosh, Fuzzy Zeller, you're my favorite golfer. Well, he came right up to me, gave me a hug and a kiss. And I thought, oh my gosh, isn't this wonderful? Well, anyhow, we had our picture taken together and he autographed the picture and everything. And it, well, that made my evening. By the 1990s, the Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce was working to fulfill the needs of the business and public sectors. It served as a public relations firm for commercial and civic events, watchdog for the business community, an information bureau, and an energetic booster for the area. The chamber's committees had refocused governmental affairs to relay issues to the area businesses, ambassadors to welcome new businesses and provide awareness of the chamber, business education that worked with school districts to increase understanding of the challenges and knowledge needed by American business, small business, and civic beautification. 
the chamber finally found its home at 71 Walnut Boulevard, Suite 110 of Rochester, where it continues today. In 2001, the board of directors and chair, Paul Johnson, hired Sherry Heine, previously of the West Michigan Greenville Chamber, as executive director. We were able to find a person who was absolutely the most persistent salesperson that there is, and that's what it takes. And she kept going back and demonstrating to these people what the chamber could do for them. Now that was something new because we hadn't always been able to show the businesses what we could do for them. You have to know what the value of your junior membership is. It's this. She started railing off stuff, and I said, "Well, okay." You know. And so she made it her her like goal for those 12 months that I was chair. Like every week, she'd give me a new perspective on why my chamber membership was so valuable. The decision turned out to time perfectly with the chamber's need to meet the challenges of the new millennium. Well, I'll tell you what started was internet sales. And um, so uh, <laughs> we, we not only had, by that time, Somerset Mall, which was a huge distraction from downtown Rochester, probably bigger than Oakland Mall when it opened, um, uh, but we had then internet sales. And uh, our executive director uh, wisely saw that and said, I can teach people how to become uh, merchants on the internet. Locally, the chamber was enjoying positive changes and continued growth. But on September 11, 2001, could only watch with the rest of the world as the World Trade Center came down. This was part of not only one of the worst attacks on our country, but an attack specifically targeting our economy and commerce. Everybody was kind of uncertain on what was going to happen going forward. And uh, so uh, the chamber um, tried to deal with that as far as, as reassuring the businesses and, and uh, offering a perspective and, and education, that kind of thing, so that um, maybe a calm in, in the sea of influx. Just as our nation was determined to bounce back better than ever, so was the Rochester area. The Chamber led that spirit and commenced a major rebranding of programming, services and materials emerging as the Rochester Regional Chamber of Commerce with its current mission to serve the communities of Rochester, Rochester Hills, and Oakland Township. I think we went from a collection of businesses that got together for their mutual good to a, a group of businesses that were, were working under the direction of a professional who knew exactly what she wanted to do. We partnered with the Community Foundation, um, the uh, DDA, the Downtown Development Authority in Rochester, Oakland University, Rochester College. Um, it, was, uh, it was a great opportunity and, and again, Sherry reached out to some of those organizations. Those organizations reached out to the Chamber because there was new leadership and everybody was kind of getting their feet wet together. and. Um, it was nice. You know, the biggest thing I think when I was on the board was the village. Um, whether the village was going to be built. We welcome all businesses as a chamber and, and it really wasn't up to the chamber to say yay or nay. You're aware of it at the chamber level. I mean, the chamber is very cognizant of it, but also cognizant of not getting involved, not taking sides, not being political, not not coming out for a candidate or an issue because they represent all of the businesses. They represent every member. Leadership Greater Rochester, a development program founded by the vision and seed funding of David Schellenbarger launched in 2002. The chamber and other community leaders met to create programming for the nine month class, which came to be managed entirely by the chamber in 2004. I knew that we were sending or electing lots of people to uh, councils and leadership positions that really may have been single issue people. They have gone in because they were mad about one thing or another. They weren't very well versed and so they, they really took them a long time to get up to speed on how this thing works. And so the leadership program is intended to, in nine months, familiarize people with how the community works, who's who, meet the right people, understand the history, understand the workings of the bigger organizations in the community. You know, there was some concern about competing with uh, Leadership Oakland, and I think we did a nice job 
And I, when I say we, I, I don't mean myself necessarily, but, but the chamber board and, and that initial grouping did a really nice job of carving out Leadership Rochester so that um, we had our own uh, a complementary group to Leadership Oakland without stepping on toes. And uh, right from the very beginning, there were more applicants than, than positions for the program. In May of 2015, the Rochester Regional Chamber of Commerce was proud to graduate the 12th class of the program and now boasts over 200 graduates, improving the greater Rochester area by serving on nonprofit boards of directors, volunteering and staying informed and involved in the activities of our region. A youth leadership retreat was a project produced by the Leadership Greater Rochester graduates that offered a condensed experience for local high school juniors and seniors and the chance to serve as junior grand marshals of the Rochester Hometown Christmas Parade and receive a $1,000 scholarship toward their higher education. The Community Outlook Luncheon was started in 2003 to offer updates for interested residents and businesses from our community leaders and originally served as a small award ceremony. In order to provide further acclaim and honor many deserving others for their accomplishments in the community, the Chamber created a separate award ceremony, Sunrise Pinnacle Awards. The Sunrise Pinnacle Awards is now in its ninth year, hosting over 500 people and celebrating 23 award winners. In 2004, the Chamber partnered with WXYZ Channel 7 to broadcast the Rochester Hometown Christmas Parade until 2012 bringing further exposure to what is now the largest Christmas parade in Michigan and increasing the tourism in the greater Rochester market. When the city of Detroit hosted the Super Bowl in 2006, the Rochester Regional Chamber was highly involved and advocated with the Super Bowl Host Committee and the Detroit Convention of Visitors Bureau to become a Super Bowl Super City, one of only nine communities chosen to host Super Bowl sanctioned events from January 26th through February 4th of 2006. Local businesses offered specials to the many visitors and tourists who flooded the area for a taste of town, an ice sculpture show, kids crawl, and other activities. The Rochester Regional Chamber of Commerce was honored in 2008 as the Michigan Association of Chamber Professionals Chamber of the Year and by Automation Alley as Nonprofit of the Year for its outstanding achievements amongst peer organizations. Rochester Regional Chamber of Commerce now serves over a thousand businesses throughout the region and over a hundred thousand area residents with full-time staff. We would not have this history if it wasn't for the expertise and vision of our board members, the commitment of our volunteers, and most of all, the investment and support of you, our members and residents. Thank you for these 60 years and we look forward to what can be accomplished in the next 60. Even after 9/11, um, even uh, in you know through the through 2000s when you know there was a question about businesses staying uh, active, I don't think we lost membership. I think there's always been enough value in the chamber that that people have put that as a priority, and that's important. I think we were pretty successful in keeping business in this town, the businesses in business, and people doing business this town. I think we did a good job of that. You can do a lot. And if you have the resources, the financial resources, the professional resources, you can really help businesses succeed. And I think that's what the Chamber is doing now. Because we work together to bring in people as well as new business and so forth. And that was, it was so much fun to be involved in that and go to these grand openings and ribbon cuttings and so forth and say, see, See what's happening here.